Oh my word. This is an insurance policy. This is an EcoFlow River Max. It is a portable battery storage system. It has about 550 watt hours of electric storage in it. And this isn't sponsored. I bought this because I am seriously concerned about the possibility of rolling blackouts in the UK this winter. It's all over the news if you've been watching. It's the idea that there's not enough natural gas in coming into the UK, so they're going to have to ration this, and that means that 40% of the UK's electricity being made from natural gas may not be possible to generate electricity all of the time. I can't have that. I work from home. I've always worked from home. So what I've done is I've got this and I've also set myself up with a home solar battery storage system. So this is my home office. You've probably seen it in a couple of other videos. And I've put these two solar panels. They're 120 watts each. It's a 240 watt system. Uh, and I've wired it up in parallel. I think. Follow the instructions, honest. Took the wires down through an air brick, out through the back behind this very nice picture, and then down to a solar controller. Just put the camera down here. So that solar controller takes in the power from the panels, then puts it out to this battery, which is 12.8 volts, 100 amp hours. To get watts, you multiply volts by amps. So that's a 1,280 watt hour battery, which is, that's quite a lot. And this is a 600 watt uh, inverter. So that puts out a single plug outlet that can produce up to 600 watts. That's enough to power everything I need in my office. My iMac 5K, sometimes I've got an Xbox going up there, some lights, maybe even a heater if it's turned down low. So. That ought to be enough, and combine it with oh, the EcoFlow River. This thing can charge from here, and then put out to here, and that will give me about 1.75, 1.8 kilowatt hours of storage in total between the two of them. So this can be charging from the sun at the same time that it's discharging into this. And this can be charging from that at the same time that it's putting power out. At least that's the idea. I haven't tested it out. I'm going to get into that in the next day or two and see how that goes. So this is really sort of a product review. I've not seen a video anywhere where these two systems are wired into each other to see if they sort of work together or not. So I could have got this on its own, charged it up when there was power coming out of the national grid, and then if it blacked out, could run the place from that for maybe three hours. This is more of a long-term project because I want to see if I can run the office completely off of solar, disconnect from the grid. So I'm going to see how that goes over the next year or so and we'll see what that's like. But so far the installation was pretty easy. It took me about an hour to get the panels on the roof. I had to make a frame to mount them. The wiring stuff was pretty simple. It was just getting everything tidied up. These guys aren't going to live out on top of this desk all the time. I'm going to put them underneath along with some other stationary stuff, and that's that's all good. So it will sit there out of sight, out of mind, powering the office. So it's now nighttime. The Eco World, the battery has been charging today, and even though it's mid-October in Scotland, the two panels gave me some very useful electricity. The charge controller does not give me an accurate readout of the battery state of charge, just a graphic description. But I reckon over the day, the panels put about 400 watt hours into that battery, which is one third its overall capacity. If anyone knows whether a more sophisticated solar controller is available that would log power generated and give me a readout of battery charge state, let me know in the comments. By comparison to the EcoWorthy, the EcoFlow River produces a lot of info, including estimates on how much time the battery has the ability to power whatever it is currently running, which is perfect for me. I tested this out with my iMac 5K, which is my main machine for working on, and even running AutoCAD, SketchUp, and several other desktop applications simultaneously, as well as two printers on standby, the system is only drawing about 150 watts at maximum. Most of the time it's drawing just 70 to 80 watts. Even if I powered my router and some lights, the 576 watt hour EcoFlow River Max could run my home office for 5 or 6 hours. 
I tried to run an electric heater from the river, but it tripped the system, because even at the lowest power setting, the heater draws over 600 watts, which is the cutoff point for both the river and the eco-worthy inverter. The river has an X-boost setting, which could, in theory, power the heater, but I seldom need the heater because computers and other electrics warm up the office pretty quickly on their own. I connected the river to the eco-worthy battery and inverter. I first tried this without adjusting the river settings, and it drew almost 400 watts per hour, which is its party piece. The river can charge up from mains electricity really quickly compared to other portable batteries. This caused the inverter to get hot and switch on its fan. I strongly suspect this is defective because it makes a terrible racket and I will be asking Ecoworthy for a replacement. Oh my god, that is really loud. I discovered that X-Boost can be disabled and the river will draw more leisurely 175 watts per hour in that setting. This puts less strain on the Ecoworthy inverter and the fan didn't come on. I suspect I could rig up the 12 volt charger which comes with the river and use that to charge directly from the eco-worthy battery, bypassing the inverter altogether. All this means the 1.28 kilowatt hour eco-worthy battery and the 576 watt hour eco-flow battery could, between them, power my home office for 15 to 20 hours. There are downsides though. First off, I should explain why I got two separate systems. I started by looking for a backup power source to run the office in the event of a blackout which led me to the EcoFlow system. I liked the battery and the tech, but their solar panels are not suitable for my needs. These are designed to be foldable and portable for camping. They aren't meant to be put outdoors permanently, and they're also very pricey relative to the power output. This led me to the EcoWorthy system. Their solar panels are ideal for my use, and the battery storage system is very cost effective compared to the river. But the river is portable and can be charged from the grid, as far as I can tell, there is no way to charge the eco-worthy battery from the grid. I could be wrong, so if you know how to do this, let me know about it in the comments. EcoFlow's technical specs say that the river's battery will degrade to 80% its original capacity after just 500 charge cycles. This isn't great, but it may be based on the assumption that the X-Flow rapid charging is used every time the battery is topped up. The eco-worthy battery, by comparison, won't degrade to 80% until after 3,000 deep charge cycles, which is much better. For that reason, I will use the eco-worthy every day, rather than the river. I should point out that the solar storage option has limitations because of where I live. My house is on the north side of a very steep hill, and from mid-December to mid-January, we get no direct sunlight. This creates some issues which I don't yet know how to address. I know that batteries don't like to be run flat for long periods of time, so if the eco-worthy system can't top up its battery during December and January, and if I can't charge it from the mains, I will have to run the office from the grid or from the EcoFlow river. I suspect I'll make a follow-up video on this issue. This brings me to value for money. I could have got either of these systems and made them work, but I bought both because each one has strengths which complement the other. If the eco-worthy solar and battery system can power my home office for 10 months of the year, then at current prices, I suspect it could pay for itself in four years. Because of its relatively short battery life, I won't use the EcoFlow River on a regular basis. I might hook it up to the larger eco-worthy battery if I have a lot of work on, but I bought this to ensure I could work during a blackout, and if it allows me to do this for just two or three working days, it will have covered its costs. I should say that if you are new to the channel, my name is Neil, and I have been a real-life architect in the UK since 2009. I specialise in altering and extending private homes, and I don't know if the UK will have to endure rolling blackouts this winter, but I'm not prepared to take the chance that this will affect my business. Plus, in the long run, getting off the grid will save me money. This is a long-term test. I'm happy to get constructive feedback in the comments, and ultimately, I want to learn about solar and battery storage so I can better advise my own clients. I've put a link in the description to both systems. It seems their prices vary over time, and I was lucky enough to get both at a discount because they each had sales on at the time I ordered. I will post updates in a few months, so if you want to see more, hit subscribe.